Hey, this is Nultzer, and this is Untitled. This week, 6-8 release, Dunkirk scenario, Dunkirk the movie itself slightly. How did it live up to the expectation? I'm not going to ruin anything about it. I just want to talk about it from a movie viewer point of view of are the vehicles historically accurate? Was it presented fairly? That sort of thing. Did Nolan deliver? We'll see. Along those same lines, how is 6-8... From your point of view, there's missions that encourage you to play French cruisers. Because they're encouraging me to play French cruisers, I finally got my tier 10. What do I think about that? There is still a discount, I believe, until the 28th, I want to say. So, if you want to save credit, work on your French cruisers. On top of all of that, I want to discuss how... Everything has been going with the German aircraft carrier, the Graf Zeppelin. It's in very early stages of testing. What do I think of it? There is a video that should be out already for more in-depth, but this is untitled. I talk about what's going on in my life. And along those same lines, sorry I didn't stream on Sunday. I'm streaming later today, if you're watching this, and we're doing the British Cruiser Line. The reason I was not streaming a very close friend came into town and we wanted to hang out. So that's what ended up happening. So, 6-8, how is it? I think it's a great patch. Yeah, it's not adding content, lots of content, but it feels like they optimized the game a little bit. I do like the Dunkirk scenario, I find it interesting. I do like getting those little rewards, those little vehicle icons, and then eventually you'll get access to a level 10. I believe it's a British commander, Jack Dunkirk. I believe there's a level 10 French whenever you get four stars with the Dunkirk mission, so that's really cool. And I can't recommend it more, really. I think I'm using that level 10 French commander in my Henri. I'm not sure though, I can't remember. And yeah, 6-8 feels pretty good. You can also get access to a black camo for the Dunkirk, the tier 8. <laughs> There's so many Dunkirk, Dunkirk, Dunkirk. I'm sure everyone in my household's gonna be like, Dunkirk, what's, what are you talking about Dunkirk? You're talking about it all the time. But there's a tier 6 French battleship Dunkirk that has a camo, and you need to play the Dunkirk itself if you have it. I believe it is base XP citadels ribbons and then kills and the citadels are probably the hardest honestly trying to get 10 citadels when you are a tier 6 and a tier 8 match is not fun it's very difficult the guns are very inaccurate at times but we did it the 100 ribbons is very easy we could get that in no time it's just time invested in the game and then the two kills yeah they were like get two kills on the same day or something like that. Like, what? Who's so bad that they can't get two kills on the same day? So, we'll get the camo. I'll show it off. I think it looks great. If you haven't seen it, it is in the 6-8 patch preview that they made with, uh, gosh. The attractive female who wears period correct outfits. Yeah, I, it's always enjoyable to watch those. Dasha, Dasha. So, 6-8, good. I haven't really been playing any ranked because there's been too many things that are new that I need to talk about and play and show. It's more important. Ranked is okay. I'm just not a competitive person like that. I don't find joy in the extra stress level. I don't feel like it's, you know, it, it six, tier six is great. It's way better than tier seven. Tier seven was a nightmare. If I get a free opportunity, I will play it, but it's too important to show off unreleased content. You know, maybe the British battleships at some point, I'll be able to play them. I don't know, Nautzer, which would you like to see? Me play ranked or me play the British battleships? Yeah, I think it's a pretty easy choice for you, right? And I think it's an easy choice for me. So that's my goal. So 6-8, we covered 6-8. The new additions from 6-8, the scenario that they added, which is which is fun. I, I enjoyed it. I like shooting down aircraft. Everyone should enjoy shooting down aircraft. 
The missions, very easy to obtain. The French cruiser line definitely pushed me to get it fully unlocked, which I did. And I guess I could cover that and down the line too. I basically own every ship except for the aircraft carriers and we're gonna work towards that. I just want aircraft carriers to just feel a little bit better. It just, it doesn't feel as enjoyable as it could be. So since we're talking aircraft carriers, let's just transition to the tier eight premium German aircraft carrier, Graf Zeppelin. How has that been? I got access to it, I think Friday or Wednesday and Quite honestly, she feels very capable, extremely capable. Now, maybe it's just my ignorant view of aircraft carriers, and maybe I'm just too uninformed, but I have had a lot of great success in her. Two fighters, three torpedo is a very strong loadout in my opinion. Four fighters, five torpedo per squadron is really strong. Uh, I'm really trying to figure out what people dislike about it because I'm not having a good time doing that. I think people just want to complain to complain, maybe make excuses for why they're bad. I don't know. It feels extremely capable. Maybe the only thing I could complain about is it's German, so it's not going to be really useful for training aircraft carrier commanders, at least for the foreseeable future there is always a possibility that they would release a German aircraft carrier line. Whether you want to admit it or not, there are some plans made. There is some possibility, so you never know. I think this is a one-off though, just me. It's a well-known German aircraft carrier. It'll get German people to buy it more so than a Japanese or an American, and people who really like aircraft carriers will buy it too. You know, it's sort of like the Enterprise. There is definitely too many players playing the Enterprise that are not skilled enough in an aircraft carrier to play it. <laughs> but it's feast or famine, right? I can take them out so easily. It's so enjoyable to do. So hopefully you enjoy the video that should have been out previously to this. I definitely enjoyed my time playing it and I look forward to playing it further. No complaints from me. Feels very reasonably balanced. It might be a little ridiculous at times, but I think that's all on the player's skill, more so than each mechanic being overpowered or underpowered. The, the reason why I think the side pan is so stupid is the fact that when you strafe away, you don't lose any aircraft. And that's a critical skill to learn when you're trying to do anti-aircraft work. If you got two squadrons, you're supposed to try and bait them into committing to attacking and then you bring the other squadron and you strafe the area. While doing this, you pull your other squadron away. It's aircraft carrier 101 at this point and for them to do it for free, for free, is a little broken. Just my thing. Now, we've covered the aircraft carrier, we've covered 6-8. How is the tier 10 French cruiser? Well, honestly, I am very surprised by how much I'm enjoying them. Do I think they are extremely strong? Well, no. It's kind of bulky. You got to stay near the back. I'm not really a person who enjoys playing from the rear, if you get my meaning. I prefer to be up front. However, I like the gun handling. The rate of fire is fair. I kind of like the tier 9 a little bit better for rate of fire. I like the feel of always doing something. I don't really like waiting on extremely long reloads. If I can't have something to do, then I feel like I am not being the most useful I could possibly be. But I do appreciate its speed for sure. Look how fast we are. We're getting on the flank of the enemy and they can't do anything. And I really like the firepower. Firepower. Sometimes I overpen where I know I wouldn't in a 203, but that's just the way it works out. So, yeah, I'm I'm happy. Maybe the torpedoes are pretty crap. You know, yeah, the torpedoes are crap. Three torpedoes is just not enough. It's basically luck. Or point blank that the torpedoes are ever useful at all. 
besides that, though, I'm enjoying my time with it. I, I, I kind of regret my opinion at the beginning, but I still feel like there's a lot of chances for Wargaming to make the cruiser lines feel very unique and useful and utilitarian. And I don't know if I feel that for the French cruiser line. I definitely feel that for the Americans, the Soviets, even the Japanese, because the Japanese have long-range torpedoes and high fire chance. This is really just long-range high fire chance, basically. The defensive fire isn't, you know, the best, it's not the worst. And the speed boost is really cool, but how often do I get to flank the enemy? I mean, we're getting a great opportunity here. However, they left open a giant flank where I can position myself so the enemy can't engage me, you know. That happens maybe once every 10 battles. Otherwise, the speed boost is more just reposition to a slightly more advantageous position on that flank. That's just the way it works out most of the time. But I prefer this style where you you find a weakness in their defense, you can punish the side, this guy can't stay bow on, he either has to move forward or retreat. He can't just stay stationary and he's deciding to move forward. Go out guns blazing because they're basically going to lose. We've had so many bases captured for so long. The French cruiser line, on the whole, though, I would say it's a success. Just like the British cruiser line, it holds the playstyle pretty much the entire way through it. I definitely appreciate that. The Americans kind of mess this up. It changes so much that you, you really don't know what you're doing. You've got some lines where you can really feel the range. Their early design lack of range is difficult. I played the Japanese cruisers and I really enjoy them, but they lack so much range. You always have to put yourself in a position where you're, you're afraid and you can never take the rate of fire because the turrets traverse so poorly. So you just basically have to take range module. Between the lack of range and the lack of speed on the turrets, you just can't risk having faster rate of fire. You just can't. So that's what ends up happening. And it kind of sucks. It would feel better if they would make the selection of the rate of fire or the range module or what have you be a very, very difficult choice. But for something like the Japanese cruisers, it is not. You need the range. And I know it's only for 9 and 10, but you get the idea. So we did 151,000 damage. Confederate, one kill, 10 fires. Not bad for first game in it for a long time. I mean, it's been like two months since I played it. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the Untitled game. I hope you all have a wonderful, fantastic day. And I will be streaming later today the British Cruiser Line. If you want to, check us out. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow with my video. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.